What's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Outpour. where we're bringing you everything LGBTQ pop culture and social justice. On this week's episode, we're talking about something that's really critical for our community. Mother Stacy Blonick was murdered in Philadelphia eight years ago, and there is still not as much as a suspect. It is imperative that we start thinking about ways that we can find justice for all of the trans women who are murdered consistently in the United States. I mean, being in that room, for example, with China, and she's talking about um, how Stacy and her would come to Philly together as teenagers and how they basically were reborn again through their transition because they literally transitioned together. So it was like a second birth. Mm -hmm. Like that is like, the most like intimate and vulnerable space somebody can be in. And like to have her, you know, tell those things and I could see she was getting worked up and I could see that it was very, you know, triggering to her. But at the end of the entire interview, she said, Stacy would be proud of me right now. Mm -hmm. You know, I turned my life around because of it. And I almost heard in my head, Stacy may have died, but I learned how to live. Mm -hmm. okay. You see what I'm saying? So I, I really heard that in those interviews. And, you know, with Dawn, uh, Kennedy, her gay mother, she was like, you know, the House of Blonick didn't do anything. Uh, you know, they, they didn't do anything. That's how she felt. Um, and I think all of that uh, compiled. And one of the biggest themes, like I was telling you, is that they all said, we as a collective can do more. And I, I really feel like we should do more. But I, I really don't know where to begin. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I'll say, you know, after watching the videos, uh, one word or buzzword I would say, you know, that comes to mind is resiliency. You know, yes. Watching, you know, the videos and have everybody express their, you know, individual emotions, whether negative or positive, the trans community is resilient mm -hmm. after everything that has happened. Time after time again, after murder after murder, crime after crime, resilient. Mm -hmm. That's what I keep thinking about when this when I when I look at these interviews, when I think, you know, of all the, the stuff that has happened. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For me, it makes me think of, you know, that's kind of like it's human nature. It's kind of like, you know, survival. You have to do what you have to do to be able to survive, um, mm -hmm. regardless if, survival. you you know, your family agrees or doesn't agree with um, your decisions. You know, you have to, like you were saying, make your own family. You have to find people and associate with those who mm. respect you and who Absolutely. acknowledge you and who affirm you as opposed to those who, you know, don't and disrespect you and, mm -hmm. you know, are um, transphobic or homophobic, mm -hmm. those things. Um, so, you know, I think that that's huge. So when we think about rights movements, LGBTQ rights movements, why do you think communities often leave trans folks out? As a member of the community, as a mm -hmm. woman of trans experience myself, I don't think that um, pe pe people who are trans want to be isolated, want to be silo, mm -hmm. want to be secluded. Mm -hmm. I think that mm -hmm. um, people who are trans want to be in want to be included but at the same time they want to be understood and just accepted okay. for who we mm -hmm. are it's not about um you know you and you don't even necessarily have to understand I, all of who all of who i am just accept me for who i am and who i'm telling you i am um but i do think that oftentimes other people are intentionally and blatantly um disregarding of the community mm -hmm. um for several different reasons reasons that are really unfortunate my, my heart hurts for that though because Survival is like such a low bar for human experience, Absolutely. right? That like survival literally is the point of being alive. Mm -hmm. And considering that we all feel compelled to do more, I'm wondering what would it take for the rest of the queer community to really be allies? 
I think f overall, for us to really be allies is that we have to be willing to teach each other. Not it and depend on trans folks to teach us, but we really, as an ally and as someone who understands, uh, you know, how to engage better with trans folks, um, and also having a certain level of respect for trans folks. I have to realize that trans folks, like Muslim women who wear garbs, are the most visible part of our community. Mm. They are really the most visible. They are on the front lines. That is what- They can be. They can be. Right. So because we get all lumped in together, you know, we have to do better with um, understanding that these, that trans folks are on the front line and that we have to do whatever we can as allies to protect and better understand their, their oppression mm -hmm. well, that they commit. Let me say this, so we're talking about allies and it's, I'm not speaking for every trans individual, but you have some individuals in the trans community who disassociate themselves from the, the rest of the LGBT community. But do you also have how can straight, you be an I mean gay folks who do that. Yeah, but how can you be an, a, a, a real life ally when you have somebody who does not even want to be associated? Well, or is this like an individual who is a part of or who identifies yes. as trans? Yes. Okay, so do we think that there may be some um, internalized transphobia that they right. have? Yeah, that's right. Exactly. About exactly. You know, that's why I said not everybody I've come in contact with, but I have a couple close friends who like, oh, no, mm -mm, that's so, not me. I, mm -hmm. I think for me, this is where it's it real. starts, right? So I had a date, you know, I always keep one. I had a date come over to my house. Okay. He was watching a video with Kaya from that T.S. Madison, okay. Queens of Court stuff. And in, in that moment, he's, he's watching the video and I'm hearing all this transphobia remarks. I'm, I'm hearing it constantly. And I was like, turn that shit off in my house. Mm. It starts there. Mm -hmm. This is another gay man. Mm -hmm. He thinks that that's okay to do. Mm. Not in my house, because I wouldn't let a white person say nigga, 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 nigga. Okay. You're not going to be having no, no, first of all, you're not going to have no uh, cisgender woman call, you know, then, you know, disrespecting and I can hear it. And he, in that moment, didn't get it. In that moment, he didn't get it. But when I explained to him, I said, do you know that, because she was talking about T.S. Madison. I said, do you know T.S. Madison, somebody like T.S. Madison is the reason why some of these other trans folks are not maybe getting beat up in Atlanta, or mm -hmm. she, she, she's older than all of us. That's a 40 something year old trans woman. You think she ain't, you know, you, you, you have to look, she is visible to the community and you can't negate that. So I hear you saying, it's my responsibility. Yes. It's your responsibility, it's yours and yours. Mm -hmm. As a collective part of Yes, each. absolutely. Okay, I, and I think that it is. I think exactly mm -hmm. what you're speaking about is ally, allies, mm -hmm. our allies, my allies, People who say that they support the trans community actually showing up. Mm -hmm. Showing up when people who are trans are not around. Okay. Showing up at Eggs. times oh. when it actually matters. On, Just now. like how you're talking about. When people are having conversations and, and, mm. and, and maybe saying things that mm. are um, negative about mm. people who are trans or whether that may be... Mm. Um, people being misgendered, people... Yeah. Um, um, there, there are so many different things um, and ways that people who are our allies can actually show up. It, for I us. think yeah. another portion of you know um, being an ally is reducing the stigma mm -hmm. that's associated with people in the trans community or the LGBT community. You have individuals who are trans, and you have people who do drag. Mm -hmm. People associate the two all the time. Yes, but it, it, so it's about people being educated. 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 Also, you know, it, there is a lot of stigma with the trans community. So it, there was, let me just give you an example. I, there, I had a coworker, she was, she's pregnant, she was pregnant. Well, she is pregnant. And mm -hmm. she was like, oh, I hope I get a girl, hope I get a girl. And I said, well, I said, honey, if it's a boy, I said, let's hope he's trans. Hmm. Let's hope he, he, he trans, and then you still have your girl. Mm -hmm. uh, oh. You'll still have your girl. I don't know how I feel about and that. And wait a minute. And she oh. said, and she, she got really upset. And I said, and she said, well, why would you say that? And I said, well, why wouldn't I? I said, what's wrong with having a, tr a trans girl? 
That's interesting. And Tori, and I think that you bring up a great point because I feel like for some reason there has been like an increase in like these gender reveal parties mm -hmm. and us kind of just anticipating and wanting mm -hmm. to know so bad whether we're having a girl or a boy. Mm -hmm. But when we're thinking about living beyond the binary, like the child, and, and, and that's where we go wrong at so much. That's like a so American thing, like that we do pretty much predicting someone's entire life before they are even wow. in the world to mm -hmm. have words and to be able to put yeah. words to who they are for themselves, as opposed to who everyone else wants or expects for them to be. Why do we think it's so hard for people, even within our community, to understand the difference between sexuality and gender? Because masculinity is really the standard, even in within gay circles. I mean, it's the I, I, of America. Or yes, and I think anything that is does not speak to masculinity is mm -hmm. wrong. So, of course, you know, well, I'm already gay. I'm already getting this oppression because I'm gay, and now I have to deal with because you know one of the big things you know when I come out of the when I came out of the closet, my mom was like, well, I could deal with you being gay, but you're not gonna you know start dressing up like a girl um a little late for that i was already doing that but that's what they because they confuse the two right so it's like yeah. this is acceptable but yeah. it's only to a certain extent. extent you can't go that far, far. because then exactly that's where, it's, you, you that's where you've drawn the line, line. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and it's like but what's the difference you are who you are regardless of mm. where you are at that point in time yes that's my perspective you are who you are and you are who you who you are going to be mm -hmm. so do you all think then that variations in sexuality are more accepted than variation in gender? Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm. But let me just tell you, I, I th this, you know, she doesn't know this, but, you know, she and some other uh, uh, trans folks don't know this, but they really have transformed my way of thinking. So I never used to say femme top. Right, okay. but I always had this feminine behavior. I always liked being feminine. I love cooking. I love sewing. I love. I have a lot of feminine gestures. A gender role. I, not, I, not, and I just love femininity because we relish so much in masculinity. I had a lot of shame with saying I was feminine. Mm -hmm. You know, so I would act like a, a, a like act mm -hmm. like a masculine top. Yeah. and that's what I'm saying. Like you. You have to be comfortable because I, you have to be comfortable in your gender role and still be comfortable in your sexual orientation. Mm -hmm. Like I can say, I am a femme top and I'm okay with that. And if that's not what you want, then that's not what you want. So when you say why we can't separate the two, that's why. Mm -hmm. I think today why, you know, the, the whole point of why we're even, even discussing this mm -hmm. is because of the media. You know, the uh -huh. criminal rates mm -hmm. associated with transphobia. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is that even mm -hmm. a factor? We have the criminal justice system, and then we have the trans community. Mm -hmm. Why is it such a big thing right now? Well, it's because people who are trans just aren't respected. People who are trans aren't valued. People who in are trans are, lives really aren't valued mm -hmm. by our society, especially when when you when we are taking the blame and it's for murders. When 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 people who are trans are killed and you're questioning and wondering, and the first question you ask is, did they know that they were trans, mm -hmm. or did they tell them they mm -hmm. were trans, or did this happen when they found yeah. out, or when you start asking those type of questions, then you're blaming and putting the accountability on the person who has is the victim, the victim as, you know? as if being trans is justification for murder exactly but over 50 percent of all hate crimes in the lgbtq communities are committed against trans folks mm -hmm. so these are people whose lives are at risk even beyond murder when we think of stats like rape mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. that over two-thirds of trans folks are at risk of being sexually assaulted and will be in their lifetime mm -hmm. most of the time there is no justice and we have a system in place for a specific reason. When you have these murders, where is the justice associated with it? Well, I think, you know, and this is where the intersectionality comes in. You know, so we, we, we're black, so we're already low on the totem pole. Then you bring in the, the gay or queer and mm -hmm. trans black folks. Trans women are on the lowest, lowest of the low. low. Like we, that's and it, the is, it is just is not, the, I mean, I have heard, you know, we are called, you know, misdemeanor murders. Mm. I've heard cops refer to black wow. LGBT folks as misdemeanor murders. Mm -hmm. 
And with especially mm. with the police, it seems like there's just no respect. The respect is not there. Mm -hmm. They don't respect our identities. They don't, know, they don't respect our bodies. And especially when you think about um, trans people, once they are, um, they get um, institutionalized and are um, incarcerated, then um, we don't want to get to how people are um, it put into the wrong prisons and um, with uh, the wrong populations mm -mm. and um, are um, withheld from taking medications and different things like that that are pretty much are going to negatively affect them. Mm -hmm. So there's just so many different implications of people just not respecting another human being. Yeah. What would we want non-trans folks to know about the trans community? I think one of the things I would like a lot of people who do not understand the trans community to really get that toxic narrative of that the trans person is obligated to tell you. And the reason why I say this is because all the black gay men who are such a big advocate of not disclosing their status, mm -hmm. yes, and I'm talking to you, those who are, they are so, they're advocates, don't tell your status, don't tell you. Those are the same, some of the same black gay men who will then say, well, she was lying. Hmm. You see what I'm saying? So stop telling yourself that narrative. That's mm -hmm. what I would tell them. I think I would say that uh, trans individuals are multidimensional. No, I'm not just a sex worker. No, I'm not just mm. a homeless individual. Um, I think we need to know that these are individuals just like you and me. Yes. We have jobs and damn good jobs. Okay. You know, a lot of people <laughs> look at, you know, individuals in the trans community, oh, they just trying to pay their bills. You know, they doing sex work because mm -hmm. they got to, or they homeless because they ain't got nowhere to go. No, we're, you know, the, the, the community is multidimensional. Yeah. And that is exactly what you were saying. I would just want people to know and to, um, and to get the fact that people who are trans are just that they're people first. So these are people, these are individuals, these are whole lives, whole human beings mm -hmm. um, with you know, all the same passions, needs, wants that the next person will have. So it, it, what's so different about this individual? Um, so I, that's definitely one thing I would want people to know. Mm -hmm. And I think I would want people to know that sex and gender are different. Mm -hmm. yes. They can be related, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but sex is about who you, or your orientation is about who you are attracted to, mm -hmm. who you love, who you lust after, and your gender is how you see yourself in your mind and in your presentation mm -hmm. existing somewhere on this spectrum of masculinity to femininity. Yes. And those are very different pieces. Mm -hmm. absolutely. Yes, absolutely. I, I want to talk about the Trans Lives Matter movement, hashtag Trans Lives Matter. Mm -hmm. How have you been seeing that come up in your circles and in your communities? So for me, um, it has become synonymous with Black Lives Matter for me. And every time I see a, a hashtag with Trans Lives Matter, it's always back to a murder. Hmm. Exactly. Always back to a murder. Mm -hmm. And you just take into account the seriousness of it. That's, every time I see that, that's what happens. Somebody mm -hmm. died. Mm -hmm. yeah. Somebody got hurt. Somebody got harmed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When I, when I hear Trans Lives Matter, and typically when I see that show up, um, it's around the same thing, well, around murders. It's around mm. when individuals um, mm. are, when, when they're killed. Um, and yeah, that's, it, it definitely brings up those feelings and it brings up those thoughts because for me, it makes me think like, I can be the next candle. I can be the next person. I could be the next hashtag. Mm. Just because, just for existing and just for being who I am, that's very real. Yes, very absolutely. Real. So we need to show up for each other before it's a murder. Yes. 28 people were murdered in 2016, 30 people were murdered in 2017. By July of 2018, already 13 trans women were murdered. Yes. That we need a movement that is happening outside of 
the death toll. We need a movement that happens all the way through. And those are just the ones we know about. What about mm -hmm. the people who haven't been identified as trans or the people yeah. who were misgendered or the people who weren't mm -hmm. represented or even able to be visible at all due to so many of the reasons that yeah. we've talked about. So yeah. I think that, you know, yeah, that's another thing that we have to be mindful of because there's so many people who are trans who either don't get the transition mm -hmm. or who die in the process of transition or who are killed um, before they're able to live out their lives and their mm -hmm. dreams and their hopes. So I think that, you know, that's also something we have to think about. Absolutely. I Also, just like in harmony with a lot of this is that when I was producing this particular show and I knew uh, Robert was writing it, um, I, you know, did some research. So, you know, we have a budget <laughs> on this show. And initially I was like, okay, we're going to get I want pictures of, I want to pay homage to all the trans women who had died. Because in my head, I'm thinking, oh, it's probably about 25 to 50. Wow. That's in my head. Before I had even did any research, you know, I had a preconceived notion. Mm -hmm. Get online, start doing my research, start looking it up. And I'm like, okay, this is 2008. This is 2009, 2010. And I mean, and I'm like 127 since two, since the death of Stacey Blonick, starting with Stacey Blonick, it has been 127 trans deaths since then in the United know. States. And I was just, I was really floored. Wow. I was floored. I, and I, you know, text everybody. Did you know there was 127 trans deaths since 2010? And that just shows how little mm -hmm. we know, right? I know that we mm -hmm. end up talking about trans women a lot, mm -hmm. right? But trans people and exist yes. on a spectrum. And so well, think of how big that number probably is. Absolutely. I can't help but keep going back to my thoughts internally. So you have, I go, go back to that justice system thing. Is it racial or is it just transphobia? Like these numbers are staggering. Mm -hmm. These numbers are very staggering. What is the actual impact? Is it a racial impact or is it an actual transphobia impact? What, I, mean, what I think it's a little of both. both. I don't both. think you can divorce it. Both. I don't think you can divorce it. I think it's, it's, it's a little of both. Oh. As we continue to push forward for justice, I, I would love for us to continue to have these conversations, to be sharing information and really increasing both acceptance and awareness of yes. the trans community. We cannot leave our trans siblings behind. Right? Yeah. There has never been a justice movement that didn't have trans bodies on the front line. Absolutely. That's it for this week's show. As always, we want to thank you for the outpour of love and support. See you next week.